Work on the new control centre for the Edinburgh tram network is almost complete. Most of the electronics are now in place, much to the surprise of the latest visitors, in this case from the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. I wasn't actually expecting that it will be that much done, that actually this room is already ready for some people to come in and just start working. As you hear all the news on the, on the internet or reading a newspaper or everything that, oh, tram might be stopped, there wouldn't be any funds for the tram, I actually think that it will be shame that they will stop working on the tram and just basically draw the line and say, no, no more funds. It's far more advanced than I had expected. Um, I have been looking out of the train window as I went past this site for the last couple of years as it's been growing and uh, um, you don't get so much of an impression from the train that it's as far advanced as it actually is. Outside, tracks are being laid, ready for the first operational trams to arrive. And preparations are also starting for the new interchange with the main line to the north. Absolutely, because this tram system will offer seamless transfer at three locations with the uh, heavy rail Scott Rail network, namely Haymarket, where the plan is to rebuild the station to facilitate transfer, as that will be the main interchange. Edinburgh Park Station, which only yesterday acquired four trains an hour on the new Airdrie Bathgate route and is also served from Dunblane. And thirdly, the Edinburgh Gateway Station here at Gogar, which it is planned should open at the same time as the tram line and be connected under the Edinburgh-Glasgow Improvement Programme towards Glasgow as, as well as towards Fife. Some of the Institute members say there had been problems in other tram networks during the construction and resistance to the plans going ahead. Yes, I think, I think the, the problem of the long lead time that it takes to build a light rail system obviously does incur a great deal of antagonism from the residents. It tends to be like and in the Edinburgh newspapers, the Sheffield, it was the News and Star, whipped up the same level of antagonism, where no one has a, now has a bad word to say, and I don't think anyone in Sheffield would envisage the city being without its tram. A decision on the future of Edinburgh trams will be taken within the next few weeks.